Hello and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Renovators. Real Estate Renovators is the business advisory show for real estate professionals. I'm Chanel, this is Rex. How are you, Rexy? I'm fabulous. Yourself, Chanel? Good. How's your week been? Anything exciting happening? My week is always exciting. It's always busy, unfortunately, unfortunately. Um, but the usual, yourself? Yeah, I mean, a busy week in, in real estate world. A lot, a lot happening across the industry at the moment. A lot of acquisitions happening, particularly with rent rolls. Um, a lot of movement on the market. A lot of redundancies actually happening this time of year, um, Rex, which is a little bit concerning. Um, but all in all, a really positive week. Fabulous. Speaking of rent rolls, who do we have today? We have an absolutely fabulous guest today, Sarah Sincotta. I don't think she needs much introduction if you're in the real estate industry. If you haven't heard of her, probably living under a rock, right? Probably. But what does Sarah do? So Sarah is, well, she was a business development manager and a very successful one. And using the skill sets that she has obtained through her years as a BDM, she's now opened up Rise by Sarah Sincotta which is a business development management training company that assists BDMs in becoming, I guess, the strongest um, and the most successful in their field. But I don't want to take away all the limelight from Sarah. So let's introduce Sarah. How are you, Sarah? Hi, guys. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks. you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you. Tell us more about Sarah. How did you start as a BDM? Did you start as a BDM? No, I actually started. So I've been in real estate now 10 years. Wow. Um, you started... don't look old enough for that. <laughs> yeah, no. 34 now. Wow. Yeah. Um, I started as an assistant property manager, moved my way up to property management. Um, five years ago, I had my aha moment and I got presented the opportunity to go into business development. So then I put all my hats on for the BDM and I haven't looked back, um, except two months now. I've gone all in in my business, Rise with Sarah Sincotta, to give back to BDMs across Australia. Wow, let's yeah. rewind back. Property management to BDM. And yeah. Property management is such a big integral part to a lot of businesses, the value of the whole real estate agency. But I feel like some businesses don't have a BDM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain what exactly did a BDM do in case those businesses that don't have one? Sure. So where do I start as a business development manager? I think um, one of the key things to, to, I guess I teach is that hiring a business development manager is the cheapest business a business owner will ever hire. Mm. Right? Cheapest business a business? Cheapest. How so? It's a lot yeah. cheaper than buying a rent roll, isn't Absolutely. it? This is true. This is <laughs> yeah. true. Absolutely. So a business development Business development manager will be the face of your business. They're out there, they're meeting people, they're connecting with people. They are showcasing the services provided by the property management company, right? The connections that a business development manager will form is not just beneficial for the property management division, but also the sales division because it closes that gap between mm. the property management and the sales department. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you go, Rexy. What makes a good business development manager? Oh, so much. Yeah. Um, I think if if I was to go back and look at, you know, what I did that made me successful as a business development manager and what I teach for business development managers to be successful is just focus on the human connection, the human relationship side. Property management experience is beneficial and helpful as well, especially now with all of the legislation changes that have occurred in property management. I think knowledge is very powerful when it comes to representing the property management department. You need to also be passionate about the company that you're representing, yeah? yeah. The team, the values, um, the services that are provided, knowing the points of differences for the rental department because real estate's competitive, right? Very so, much so, especially in that BDM space. Yeah, so you have to know your your stuff right mm. you have to be good at solving problems for investors because this happens every single day right bdm solve problems for pain points specifically for investors so i feel like that's a really crucial point as well for a bdm um also, so they need the sales as well as the knowledge of property management absolutely saying. so you need to be able to create opportunities right so a business development manager can't just sit back and wait for the phone to ring for investors they need to be out there and i say hunting for business, yeah? Going out there to get opportunities, meeting new people, um, forming really strong relationships and partnerships with other businesses as well. Because if you look at it, a great BDM will talk to investors before they've even purchased an investment property. And that's I feel right. like that's that's key. Yeah? Do you think, Sarah, coming from a property management background, I get this question asked a lot, if someone wants to transition from a real estate office into a BDM role. 
Do you think you need to have been a property manager in order to be successful as a BDM? I don't think you need to. I feel though that you should definitely invest in training to know the legislation, to know the processes and procedures that property managers face on a daily basis, right? There's specific questions that investors will ask a business development manager that you need to know the answers to. Right. So, for instance, how do you deal with rent arrears or what is your VCAT procedures or processes? Yeah. What do you do if my my tenant has left an absolute mess in the property? How do you help me through that? So knowing what the property managers do on a daily basis definitely helps the BDM represent the B, um, the property management arm. And so, how do they do that? They, they learn from the property management team or they actually yeah. have a- more knowledge than property management. Well, too. look, property managers, there's a lot of training out there. Um, so I think definitely investing in doing some property management training with the property management department and follow a property manager around for a day, get to know what they do, get to know the conversations that they're having, get to know the systems that they're using that helps the day to day for property management. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I would mention with a BDM and being a great BDM is not only the hunter skills, but also the nurturing skills. So yeah. investors, you want them on the journey for the long time. Yeah. So it's making sure that you have the skills to be able to really connect with someone, like an investor, know what their goals are, what their future plans are, so that you can nurture their relationship throughout the entirety of their relationship with the property management department. And How important is it, Sarah, to have a really strong brand and property management division as a BDM? Because you're out there pitching the services of a company that you're representing, Mm. and you're also pitching the the rental division that are gonna be managing someone's biggest biggest asset. So what, what, I guess, importance do you place on brand and the team that you have in place as a BDM? Yeah, great question. Um, It's really important to know, I suppose, if you're working for a franchise or you're working for just an independent Uh, you know, property management department, getting to understand the values that lie behind the brand, yeah? But also your personal values, your beliefs, your skill sets, because that's what makes your brand. So essentially as a business development manager, you will attract business because of the brand of the company, but you will win the business because of your personal brand. Yeah. Human to human, be relatable. And you can't be relatable if you're not connected with who you are as a person, what you represent, what are the things that you love? How can you talk about that with other people that you're meeting? So Mm. I think that all ties in together as well. Mm. Just be who you are, showcase that. Yeah. We're all unique. Um, I like to say the biggest difference for me as a business development manager was myself. There was no other Sarah Sincotter out there, right? Because I knew what made me special and unique when talking to investors. So personal branding now, I think is really important when social media now, everyone's putting themselves out there. If you're just who you are, you're confident in being a bit different and unique and showcasing all of that, definitely helps being an attraction agent. People do business, I think people forget this, People do business with people that they like yeah. and people that they trust. Trust. And yeah. you can read every sales book under the sun or you can go to any training, you know, as much training as you want. But in the end, when you're looking to do business with someone or pay someone for a service, you're going to want to do it with someone that you, you like and trust. I think people do business for three reasons. One is they know, they know the person, they trust the person. Second, they're, they're seen as a trusted or they refer to them. So mm. they're trusted by referral process. Referral, yeah. And I think referral in Australia is so important. Absolutely. And the third is you're seen as an industry leader in a field. Yeah. Uh, if you tick all those three boxes, you're going to always do well. But yeah. what you said really resonates. Like Real estate is a personal service. Mm-hmm. No matter how many Correct. systems you put in place or um, processes or brands, it's still a personal service. And when Absolutely. what you're saying really resonates that, you know, it is you, the BDM. And with your training, how do you get that out of someone? How do you, because you're training. Well, even what if, if someone, if someone's a BDM that comes to you, Sarah, what's the first thing you'll, without sort of giving away too much from your mm. training program, but exactly what, 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 what steps would you take in order for someone or, or the tools you would give them to be a successful BDM? Yeah. So I feel, and again, without giving too much away, but I'm like Give it quite away. an open it's book. Okay. Yeah. Um, so look, the the mentoring program I think is quite unique in terms of it's integrated with your personal development, 
with your professional development, yeah? Because it all starts with us. If we want to be better, if we want to have stronger relationships with people, you have to look at yourself first. Before Is that then. hard? Because everyone's going to be different. Oh, well. Insecurities and family problems yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah, especially for I mean, not everyone ideas. can lead and hold space for people, right? Mm. So that's a unique quality in itself in my skill set where I'm able to identify that from each individual person. So what challenges are they facing? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What, what are they wanting to achieve in their life? What are they wanting to achieve when it comes to the relationships that they're forming, not just with referral partners, but when they network, when they're connecting with investors, what do they want to feel? Yeah. And yeah. this drives them, it motivates them. So it gives them the confidence in themselves to be able to go out and connect. It's to go out and represent the business and to do the best thing that they can do every single day. Like you said, we're in a service business, yeah? Mm. You need to be able to be confident in yourself to have these great conversations with people and go out and create the opportunities that they deserve, yeah? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, well, confidence is one thing, but then there's also an element that comes to in-office training. So you wanna be a brilliant BDM, who trains you in mm. your real estate office? So can you talk us through where that gap in the market is and what sort of drove you to, to, to create rise as a BDM with maybe not so much industry training? Yeah, so I'm quite lucky. Um, I've always had great mentors and I invest in coaches. I've invested in mentors. Like I have a mentor that I invested the whole year with him because I knew that for me to be able to be the best version of myself, not just personally and professionally, I needed to connect with someone that has been there, done that and can help me with the mindset and the skill set to be able to do the best thing that I can do. So that's how I give back to BDMs. I have been in a high performing sales office. I've also worked mm. in a property management only office. I understand the challenges. I can speak to that. I can then identify the strategies and the goals for the individual BDMs to be able to utilize that in their individual businesses that they work for. Because every business is different. Every BDM is different. It's just playing to their strengths their marketplace as well is also a really important factor to be able to implement what they have learned in their day to day. Wow. Yeah. Understood. And you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot, what, what I see a lot of business potentially, potentially don't do is a link. They don't link the BDMs with the sales department. The property management department runs by itself, mm. sales runs by itself. There's sometimes a, a big division within the real estate agency. Um, and I feel like that should be brought together and a Absolutely. BDM should be the person. Is that something you focus on in your training? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, there are a lot of agencies now, though, that don't have a sales team actually with the department. Like you're seeing mm. a lot more now property only agent businesses mm. um, and sales only agency businesses as well. So there's, there's two parts. So the BDMs that I work with, they might have a sales agent arm or they might actually be working with companies that only do sales. So to see where there's synergy there, where they can help each other, because yes, a BDM needs to do sales appraisals on all of the properties that are listed for sale. Yeah, they need to be talking to the investors that are coming through the open mm. for inspections, attending the sales meetings. Same thing from the sales agents though. It's knowing what's happening in the rental department, knowing what renters are looking for. Average days on market, like let's just use Melbourne as an example and we were having a discussion before, like right now a point of difference is, isn't if you can lease a property quickly, a landlord's expectation right now is that, you know, you list a property and it will rent quickly. Yeah. So how do we work with sales agents to actually offer that extra service and talking about, well, this property is located in this area, which is in high demand for your renter. And that's helping the sales team when they're talking to investors daily. So they know that, hey, this property is gonna be a great purchase for you because of the results that our property management mm. division have been able to achieve for our clients. That's probably, a really good point, actually. From yeah. an investor's yeah. point of view, the yeah. return on investment. Like, yeah. if a salesperson doesn't understand what the rental is going to be, they can't talk, relate about it. And it's about, not spoken right. about. We always look at the property management results or the, the sales results. What about the results of the BDM that, you know, you introduced a property that an investor purchased and now they're, ex, you know, mm. achieving X amount of revenue on, you know, their, their rental return. Like, that's Absolutely. a massive, massive achievement. And there's a lot, of, a, a lot of investors out there that are looking at properties like this, but I feel like, BDMs don't get the exposure that the sales or property management team do. do. Do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, and, and this is why I did Rise, it was to give BDMs the opportunity to 
go out and create some noise as well because they are the glue between the sales and the rental yeah. department. Yeah, so as and much- And also I would say that the future of the real estate agency, if the property management business grows, sales will grow. But what I don't- Yeah, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. I don't, win-win. I don't yeah. get why, yeah. and I mean, maybe I see this a little bit more, but we'll introduce BDMs to companies that don't have a BDM and they're like, no, Chanel, I'm not interested, don't, don't need a BDM. I don't get it. Why don't you need a BDM? The, 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 the property management department is your biggest asset. That's what you sell when you cash out. It's what gives you your recurring income. I think it's just yeah. education. They don't understand they don't, the value. Well, that's the value. what I, and, and um, yeah. tell us, like, what is the value? Well, like, we what just can discussed. a good BDM do in terms like, of revenue? Well, much cheaper than buying a, a rent roll. Yeah, and a rent roll that might not tick all the boxes in terms of now you have to, and you would know Rex, like you have to have so much in place now. Disclosure statements, um, minimum standards, compliance. So this is what property management companies are looking at. So your BDM is making sure that the clients that they bring in and the investment properties tick all of those boxes. They're quality investors. It's organic. Yeah, it's organic, organic, right? So what a BDM and the value that it can bring to a rent roll is what we've spoken about. So helping the sales team, helping the property management team, being the voice of a a business, yeah? And attracting clients to a business. So let's just use social media for an example. A lot of people are spending a lot of money on ads, on marketing, a lot of money. When you can have a business development manager just having really authentic conversations with people that want to work with their business. But it's the authentic conversation. I feel like a lot of BDMs don't have those authentic <gasps> conversations. Well, my BDMs that I mentor <laughs> definitely do. <laughs> but a lot of them have for lease or lease this many properties or whatever and the case I may be. I think yeah. that's the problem as well. Like we were chatting about this just before we yeah. started filming is that BDMs don't really have a voice on social media and we were talking about the lease sticker on a sign and that's pretty much their only form of advertising. I think you were saying yeah. something more about how they put the lease sticker on. And, <laughs> we won't and the go there. <laughs> Yeah, we won't go there. But yeah, there's a few interesting photos out there on social media. Um, yeah. I love the real estate industry. It's so yeah. exciting. It is spicy. It's entertaining. It is yeah. entertaining. But what 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 should BDMs be out there talking about, Sarah? Like mm. what 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 would you want anyone that's watching right now, an investor or a landlord? What what message do you want to put out there? Yeah, well, like we were talking about, I feel like some business development managers are, are scared to talk about certain topics, but those topics is actually what investors want to hear. Yeah tell investors what's happening at the moment with VCAT. There's such a backlog. Tell investors why it's so important to get the best possible renter in their property, to save them heartache, to save them pain. So and that's not normally the highest payer. So someone might overbid for a rental, but it doesn't mean they're the best tenant. Yeah, 100%. And at the moment, like you you talk, you will you see um, renters are, you know, some are struggling to get a rental property and just asking to pay more rent, right? Mm. Because they're that desperate for a property, but yeah. still being ethical. Obviously there's things in place that we have to keep in mind when you get those circumstances um, coming in place. Um, so value is essentially the pain points to investors. What are the problems that you solve for them? How do you solve those problems? I think is really important. So not just saying, hey, we've leased this property, great result. How did you lease that property? Yeah. What was special about this property that attracted so many renters to that? Go in depth into your posts, not just your lease sticker. Yeah. Share the story behind that. How did you get that client? Where did they come from? What was the service that you provided to them? How did you really achieve that result for that client? It goes back to that connection. Connection. It yeah, does. And absolutely. I think when people talk through not just the, the, the successes, but the trials and tribulations of the industry yeah. and bring a little bit of authenticity to their personal branding, it attracts so much business. So much more. Yeah. yeah. In terms of a real estate office, and I think this is what you touched on earlier, that some real estate agencies don't realise the value of a BDM. In terms of return, and you, and you touched on it as well, mm. the saying that you know it's the value to you know, grow the rent roll, it's cheaper than buying one, but a return on investment from an investment point of view, a business owner, yeah. they're paying X dollars for, say $100,000 for a BDM, a decent BDM, X mm. dollars for training. How much, what, what's a good BDM, like how many properties could they list in a year? What would be the average? Well, that's a good question because I don't, I feel like whoever made the rule that a successful BDM should be listing a certain amount of properties every month is absolute BS. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right? Because yeah. every office, again, is different. They might have a sales team. They might not have a sales team. BDM, some of them still have to do leasing 
which consumes a lot of time. So leasing as in like they have to do the marketing, they still have to have a look over applications, yeah. they still yeah. have to speak to the renters and your uh, landlord. So it really depends on how much support your business development manager has as well. Do they have a VA or do they have a personal assistant that helps with admin or going to photo shoots, collecting keys? There's, there's a lot. So I don't like to just say a successful BDM should be listing X amount. X amount. I would rather say, what is your BDM returning for your property management? So looking at the revenue side and not just the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for an example, um, one year as a business development manager, I made over $500,000 in return for the property management department. That was just in revenue. That's not also factoring in the opportunities that I was able to create back to the sales team yeah. as well. Mm. Yeah, correct. And that's a big part that I think is missing. Huge. That they, you know, it's another contact with a potential seller, vendor, yeah. landlord. Yeah. It's more marketing for your firm. And you're working all together then. It's not this division it, yeah. of property management and sales. It's let's all work together. You've got the same mission right? Mm. You've got the same values within the business. Let's work together to make sure that everyone is profitable, right? The yeah. business is profitable. We're all working to achieve the same results. Yeah. Sales team needs to do well. The property management team needs to be well. And that BDM definitely bridges that. Bridges that. It's interesting yeah. because I often get a call. I often get calls from clients and they say, Chanel, like talk me through what, like, what do I offer my BDM? Mm. Or if they've decided to bring on a BDM, like, can you give me some ideas of structure or can you send me some competitive structure so I can look over them? Which of course I would never do. <laughs> but I say the exact same thing. Like there is, it's not like sales where I can go, Hey, this is a standard real estate sales seller. Or this is, a, this is what the, the market's paying for a property manager. Yeah. A BDM salary and structure is so unique to it that is. particular office. Yeah. There's clients out there or offices out there that I know get 20, 30 internal leads flying through that door every single month. Yeah. And there's offices out there that their BDMs need to literally quite literally cold call um, to get business on because they're, they're prospecting from a, a very small database. Mm. Some have sales teams of 20 and a property management division of 30. Some have no sales division. And that's where I think the turnover lies in BDMs or the frustration with, we, we, you know, BDM didn't work for us. Your KPIs have to be a measurement of not just, you know, what your competitor down the road is doing. Like Absolutely. you need to bring on 12 to 15 a month or you're not profitable. It's investing in a human that, you know, you might have to wait six to 12 months to get a return on investment because your company isn't at the level your competitor is that's bringing on 20 yeah. leads per month. You yeah. know what I mean? Also you just absolutely it. nailed it. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a really frustrating, sorry, Rexy, it's a, quite a frustrating conversation to have sometimes when I'm speaking to business owners that were placed a BDM with. We're not getting the results, you know, like, you know, they, they apparently they were doing 15 when they were at XYZ real estate. Well, yeah. You don't have the database or the team there yeah. for them to be able to succeed. Or like, have they invested in a mentor? You know, do they have someone that, that can help them be held accountable, give them that boost of confidence, come up with some goals and some planning for them because sales and sales goals and rental goals are completely different. Correct. Right? Like you just said, they might have a massive sales team arm. They might not have a sales team. So your KPI is going to be different in terms of how many clients a business development manager should bring in every single month. Yeah. You have to factor those in. And commissions are different. Salaries are different. Yeah. Um, I'm talking to BDMs all the time and it, it varies. It's so it's, varied. Yeah, it really and varies. it's interesting because we're not used to that in real estate. It's like you're a sales agent, your commission varies. Yeah. You're a property manager, yeah, your, your salary might vary dependent on years of experience, but realistically it all sort of works out to be quite similar, mm. different depending on locations. But a BDM, we've placed BDMs at 50K, we've placed BDMs at 120K. Yeah. We've placed BDMs that are, you know, need to hit 15 properties before they make commission in the month to a BDM that gets commission on every, every property, property they bring on. It yeah. is so unique to your to your business. Yeah. And I think that's something business owners that are potentially looking to bring on a BDM mm. really need to be aware of. And I also think that if they're bringing on a BDM and this is the first time they've brought on a BDM, someone like Sarah would be absolutely fantastic to not only train the BDM, but potentially train the business or the mm -hmm. director in how to correctly structure a BDM. Absolutely. I think it's also about knowing that it's not just return on your current investments, the future, the Correct. value yeah. in your business. Yeah. Some people look at the bottom line year to year and go, oh, it hasn't really made me money, but it has. Mm. It's created an asset for you that's going to be worth so much more. Well, it's like any more. asset. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't buy a property and make $100,000 in yeah. your first year of owning it. It's, yeah. it's a long-term asset, but you have to invest in them and not just invest in them in going, hey, let's pay your salary every month, but invest in them with personal development yeah. with people like yourself and your company 
that's actually going to give we, them the yeah. tools to be successful. Yeah. Can you let us know, if I have a real estate agent, what, does, what services do you offer from, from a real estate agency? I know you, you, yeah. you spoke about mentor and BDMs, but from an office point of view, how do we engage you and what do you offer? Yeah, so the services I'm offering now is um, just speaking um, within the property management division and the sales division as well. So to both, the importance of um, you know creating this environment that both divisions can thrive. Um, for property management only agencies, I do speaking presentations about creating growth through connective conversations. And then we can do goal strategy sessions together. Um, my BDM mentor program is great because it's after hours, it runs for eight weeks, it's structured in a way that each week flows really nicely mm -hmm. and is really good at doing the foundation work to then be able to also implement while they're learning and I think that is the key as well so a lot of um, mentors that I've had previously you can learn things but they haven't actually set things that they can do or actionable items straight away and so it's over eight weeks so it's, eight weeks yeah. yeah so it's quite um like the risers I call them at the end of the program like oh I miss my Tuesday nights because they're with everyone but it's like I'm still here to support you on your yeah. journey yeah um the other thing that I do is I, I'm offering to consult with businesses now directly right. with their BDM. So this is to really structure the different channels for growth. As we said, every office is different, not one size fits all. So it's really just learning what they're doing, what their goals are, and then working together with their BDMs to create that next level of growth for them. Fantastic. Can yeah. you talk us through, before we, before we finish up the episode, Sarah, um, a success story of a riser that you've had the yeah. pleasure of training. Actually, I was just speaking to one of my risers yesterday. Um, so they are a smaller boutique agency in Melbourne. So just she finished the program, I think it was a month and a half ago. Um, she's now got the confidence to ask for the business on the spot. Yeah. yeah. And some business development managers haven't been able to do that. It's just being, like I said, really confident in your abilities, your value, your points of difference is to be able to have those conversations. She is now listed an extra three properties just a month from her organic relationships that she has with referral partners. So that was a really great success story. Another um, BDM that I've mentored, she's now meeting up with other businesses that are helping investors. So she's now oh. taking that next step, not just great. waiting for the phone to ring, going out there and creating these opportunities. So that's what I really love in seeing these unique these, opportunities. Yeah. Are so an extra five to 10 listings a month I'm seeing from my business development managers Fantastic. in terms of organic growth. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah, for coming Thank down. Thank you guys so um, much. And anything else you want to I think we'll with? leave the details of Sarah's business um, at the end of this episode because I think it's 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 quite unique. I don't know anyone else in the industry that's doing it. We have a Definitely lot of property management yeah. trainers. We have sales trainers all over the place. But someone that's specific to, to BDM, I think, is such a unique a unique positioning in the market, yeah. but also incredibly valuable to a business because we talk about it all the time. Your rental division is your biggest asset, so why not have someone growing it? Yeah. Um, thank you so much, thank Sarah, for being so a part. Much. It's been great. Brilliant. And we'll see you on the next episode of Real Estate Renovators. Yeah.